The first United Nations movement, the first one world movement was in Genesis chapter 10 and 11 with Babel. And that's what we're going to look at. Take your Bible, go to Genesis 10. <clears throat> Genesis 10. Genesis 10. <clears throat> Genesis 10 verse 1. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And unto them were sons born out of the flood. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, and Magog, and Madai, and Javan, and Tubal, and Meshech, and Tyrus. And the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, and Riphath, and Togarma. And the sons of Javan, Elisha, and Tarshish, Kittim, and Dodanim. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, every one after his tongue, after their families and their nations. And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizram, and Foot, and Canaan. And the sons of Cush, Seba, and Havilah, and Sabta, and Ramah, and Sabtika, and the sons of Ramah, Sheba, and Dedan. And Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one of the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. And Eric, and Akkad, and County in the land of Shinar. The land of Shinar, which is the area of Babylon and Iraq, modern day Iraq. The beginning of his kingdom was Babel. Nimrod's type of the Antichrist. Okay? Nimrod, ultimately, from what history tells us, and, 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 and Alexander Hislop exhausted this subject in his book, The Two Babylons. I think it was written in the 1800s or early 1900s. And he shows how Nimrod was the start of the Roman Catholicism mother and child worship. Semiramis. His uh, mother, who he married, married his mom. It's disgusting. And he became the sun god. In fact, the little pictures that show the baby Jesus in the arms of Mary, it's not Mary and it ain't Jesus. That stuff goes way back with Babylon. Before Christ Jesus ever came on the scene, there were the pictures of the, the queen of heaven holding the little sun god with a halo around his head. Before Christ ever came on the scene. It's the Babylonian, listen, Roman Catholicism is the ancient Babylonian mystery religions and it goes way back and it starts with Babel and Nimrod. Now, take your Bible, go to Genesis 11. <clears throat> Let's watch what happened. And the, verse 1, and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the land, from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, go to. Let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime a day for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach into heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And by the way, can I tell you something? <clears throat> when the devil rebelled in Isaiah 14, five times he says, I, 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 I. Five seems to be the number of death in the Bible. When the Assyrian, a type of the Antichrist in, in, in Isaiah 13 rebels, speaks of himself, he says, I, 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 five times. When Adam faced the Lord after his sin, five times he said, I, 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 I. Cain, when confronted, five times, I, 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 I. If you'll check it out, pretty sure you'll find it right here. Us, 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 five times. Five times, just like the devil, just like Adam. Just like, now watch this, <clears throat> verse 5, and the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, behold, the people is one. The people's what? One. And it's a good thing they finally achieved it. They're one. No, it's not, no, uh-uh. The Lord says they're one. And we got trouble. And they all have one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them. Which they've imagined to do. Go to. Look, look how the Lord does. Lord, they say, go to, go to, let us. So the Lord says, go to, let us go down. And there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad up from thence upon the face of all the earth and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel. Because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Okay. Now. Notice this phrase, go to. Go to is defined in the dictionary as to, to come, move, or begin. It's a phrase of exhortation, like, let's get going with it. Let's go. Let's get this thing on the road. Let's go. Let's move. Let's get this thing going. And that's the, the phrase they're using. And the Lord used it too. Now, I want you to notice something. Please stay with me this morning. 
I want you to notice in verse 3. They said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them throughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. Please pay attention. They were building with brick instead of stone. They were building with brick instead of stone. Brick is defined in the dictionary as a mass of earth, chiefly clay. Clay in the Bible reminds you of what? Us, flesh, man, our fleshly bodies. So this tower being built is made of brick. Brick. Listen. Brick is a mass of earth made chiefly clay, first moistened and made fine by grinding or treading, then formed into a long square in a mold, dried and baked or burnt in a kiln. Listen. This is the first United Nations movement, a precursor to the UN of today and what will happen in the tribulation. They use brick. Bricks are a product of man's efforts. God's altars were to be made of natural earth or whole stones. The temple was made of stones. Even if the right material, stone, was used, it was not to be hammered or worked on by iron tools. God doesn't need our embellishments. They used brick in Egypt and later, and, and, and later they used brick to worship false gods. Go to Isaiah 65. Now, if you've got a brick home, it's not evil. Honestly, and you might think, but I'm telling you, people will take and run with something. They will take it. All we need is for us to come home and some wife call me. He's beating the house down. He's taking that sledgehammer to it. God's not giving the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. All right? Now, these are things that are things in the Bible that show us things, right? So there's the Bible contrasts brick and stone, all right? They had brick. Brick is something man makes and manipulates and forms for his purposes. Stone is something from God. And even stone was not to be embellished when building for the Lord. See, what they're building is definitely not for the Lord. It's for man. Isaiah 65, look at verse 2. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a, what kind of people? Rebellious people. Which walketh in a way that was not good after their what? Own thoughts. A people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face. That sacrificeth in gardens and burneth incense upon altars of what? Brick. God's altars were to be made of stone, whole stone. And you weren't to embellish it or mess with it, whole stones. Brother, listen. Bricks are uniform. They're like cookie cutter deals. One thing I've noticed, some of you remember that sermon I did years ago, that message on pearls. Brethren, God is not interested. He called us all to holiness. But God is not interested in churning out like churches are today. To where, you know what you do? You get them to pray the prayer. Then you disciple them a certain way to get a certain look in a certain way. And you spit them out. God is interested in an individual work. Listen, bricks are uniform. Hey, they're easier to handle and control. Brethren, you want to know what churches or pastors want today? A people that can just be easily controlled. Put a bunch of standards and certain things on them just to where, okay, it's easier for me to control them rather than having them become something God wants them to be. And they can be, you know what bricks can be done that you can't do with stone? Mass produced. Mass produced. Stone is a product of God. Brick, a product of man. Our churches are becoming today built of brick and not stone. Churning them out. A work of man. And it's easier because you get a certain look, a certain way you want. There. Church. Brethren, did you know through the years, you know, God's let us have this building right here, you know, for the, you know, I've had people in the past, well, pastor, maybe someday the Lord will give you a church. I thought, what are you talking about? I've got a church. When we were meeting in the Welton's living room, we got a church. What they're thinking of is building. 
Like, like that, brethren, that's, you know, a certain look. Got a certain look. That's what things are shooting for today. Even in believers individually, a certain look. Brethren, if we're not careful, we're producing, and that's what this world wants. A certain mindset, a certain way. You get people as they're easier to control. Brick. Rather than stone. Ain't, listen to this. Ancient bricks were generally square rather than rectangle. They were gen, ancient bricks were square and measured about, check this out, 13 by 13 by 3.5. 13 in the Bible's number of rebellion. And lo and behold, that's what they're doing is rebellion. They often were stamped with the name of the monarch on them. Good Revelation 13. Brethren, there are bricks being produced today. Not a work of God, but bricks. And the time will come, they'll have stamped on them the name of their God. Listen, Romans 13, verse 16. And he calls with all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in the right hand of their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark of the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here's wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast for his number of a man. And his number is through 600, three score and six. Now, brethren, that's tribulation. What I see in the Bible, church ain't there. But, brethren, we're, we can see the setup. We can see the setup. We can see the setup. Brethren, there's so many things that I believe were dry runs and test cases for this COVID stuff, man. Brethren, you know what World War II was? A dry run. For the tribulation. World War II. And what happened during that time. Was I believe a dry run for the tribulation. Hitler's ID card. To the best of my knowledge. And there have been photos of it. Hitler's ID card was numbered 555. Next guy up. 666. Open season on the Jews. The Holocaust. All that stuff. You'll have the tribulation. Just in a degree. Jesus said there's never been a like for. All right. Genesis 11, they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. So instead of using natural God-produced stone, they made man-made, uniform, cookie-cutter type brick that you can put in place easy. Brethren, see, often pastors today like brick. Easier to manipulate. Stone, stone, brethren, is not easy to manipulate. If you stone's beautiful, I think. If you ever seen a, a rock colored, a rock sided church or home, they are beautiful to behold. But stonework is not as easy. With a brick, boom, 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 boom. With stone, you may have to use one hand, two hands. You got to adjust that thing. It's more work. And you know what we want, even in our churches, I want it easy. No problems. I want a pastor, but I want no problems. Man, I didn't get into it for this. Well, you probably weren't called to it then. If it's going, I'm just saying, brother. We, we like let's get let's we let's get brick. Okay, you may get brick, but they're a product of you and not God. And stone, stone is a little bit harder to handle. You got to work with it a little bit more. All right, look here. They did what they have for mortar, slime. You know what slime is defined as? Soft, moist earth having an adhesive quality. It's like viscous mud. So slime has a, a an adhesive quality. It, it, it sticks, but, but listen. Rather than tempered mortar that hardens like cement and has strength, they use soft, soft, sticky slime. Slime is sticky and it is adhesive, but it doesn't have the strength and the durability of mortar. You ever, you ever, you ever when I was, when I was my, my cousin, he's old enough to be my daddy or so, be my cousin, he, uh, he come lay the chimney for us. And I was young and I mixed his mortar. And, Big old wheelbarrow. He put that in the water and I had to mix his mortar up. That's work. That's work. Brethren, mortar takes work to produce. 
but it lasts. Go to Ezekiel 13. Slime, brethren, it sticks, but it don't have the qualities of mortar. You know what? This world is producing something. The Tower of Babel, they was producing it, but it didn't last. This world's producing something, but it ain't going to last. What God does, it lasts. And a work of God, a work of God done in somebody's life lasts. Ezekiel 13, look at verse 10. Ezekiel 13, verse 10. Because, even because they have seduced my people, saying, peace, there was no peace. And one built up a wall, and lo, others daubed it with untempered mortar. Saying to them which daub it with untempered mortar that it shall fall. There shall be an overflowing shower, and ye, O great hailstone, shall fall, and a stormy wind shall rend it. Notice something. They daubed it. They daubed it. <clears throat> Brethren, there's a little difference between daubing or dabbing something on and really applying it and putting it in there. Brethren, we've turned today, and let me tell you something. My God in heaven knows how much I appreciate and love my church. You people come and you sit on Wednesday night. And sometimes these services will go to a length. And I'm telling you, a lot of places on Wednesday night, they're not going to do it. They're not going to sit for it. And they'd be upset. And you come and you sit and you listen. The Word of God. You think I don't appreciate it and notice it? Oh, yeah, I do. Oh, yeah, I do. And I sit there and I'm stunned by it, to be honest with you. I don't take it lightly. It's something. But that's the problem today. We can't handle sitting and listening. Too often we got to dob. Dob a little preaching. Dob a little teaching. A little dob a Bible here. A little dob a Bible there. We'll get a little something, a little something that's all nicey-nicey. A little dob of this, a little dob of that. Instead of the murder of the Word of God and the things we need to make a solid and built for Him. Take your Bible, go to Isaiah 30. My, my, how I thank the Lord for you people. I'm telling you, I appreciate you. I do. I respect you. I respect you. You show by your actions that you care about the things that God wants to hear. And you tell me you something. What a gift. Oh, I appreciate it. Isaiah 30. And I take it seriously. That's why I'm like, Lord, these people are coming. I, they got, they got to get something from you. I, well, Lord's got to give something. I'm serious. I, Isaiah 30, verse 10. Which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits, get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Look, just give me a nice, encouraging, positive message. I don't want to hear nothing about God. I don't want to hear nothing that makes me feel guilty. I don't want to hear nothing that makes me feel bad about myself. I don't want to hear that stuff, preacher. Okay. Take your pick. But how will it stand you at the judgment one day? How will it stand you one day? How is it preparing you and helping you to meet with God one day? Go to 2 Timothy 4. 2 Timothy 4. 2 Timothy 4, verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God... And the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick of the dead at His appearing in His kingdom, preach the Word. Be instant, in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, for the time will come when they will not endure. It won't put up with it. Sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. Just tickle my ear. Tickle my ear. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Go to Titus 1. Just dob it. Just dob it. Don't put on the mortar that'll harden and make strength. Just dob it. A little Bible here. A little this, something this. A little something here. Just dob it. A little dob it here and there. Listen. Titus 1 verse 14. <clears throat> Not giving heed to Jewish fables and, com and commandments of men that turn from the truth. What they have for mortar? Slime. Slimy, ooey, gooey, sticky preaching and teaching. You got me? Slimy, ooey, gooey, stick. Brethren, there is some, there is some, 
preaching and teaching out there today, that honestly, I don't think I could sit through it. Because it is almost effeminate. And it is just ushy, gushy, touchy-feely. And see what's happened. Okay, in the past, we've had men that hammered hard, but some they didn't have anything to say. They were like a, wind, a, a, a thunder, but no rain. What's happened, though, it's gone the other way. Well, we, and we don't want to be like that. Those, those men that just were mean and just hard. So now it's ushy, gushy, touchy-feely, slimy, ooey-gooey, instead of solid, sound, and yes, hard Bible preaching and teaching. Hard in the sense of it's Bible. The Bible itself. It needs no embellishment. It by itself is hard enough. But we need that. Mortar gets hard and produces something solid. Notice what else was going on there at um, Babel. One language, one speech. Isn't that interesting? Take your Bible, look at Genesis 11. And, and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. Now you may say, well, isn't that kind of redundant? Don't they mean the same thing? No, 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 huh, uh uh-uh. One language, one speech. The word speech is defined as words as expressing ideas. They, in, in other words, they spoke the same language and they were saying the same things. One language, one speech. They were, they, they all spoke the same language, but they all were saying the same things. You know what's happening today, brethren? United Nations, the media day, everybody is looking for the same things, saying the same things worldwide. Same kind of mindset. Look at, look at verse uh, 4. It says, in the land of Shinar. The Shinar, you know where Shinar is at? It's near the Tigris and Euphrates River. Shinar is near the Tigris and Euphrates River. Take your Bible, go to Genesis 2. <clears throat> <clears throat> Now, brethren, they were traveling from the east, and they settled there. I submit to you, I think there's a reason they were doing it. What had just happened? The flood, a worldwide flood. Prior to that, prior to that, for the best we know, listen, they knew where Eden was at. Uh, Evidently, we would imagine until the flood, those cherubim with a flaming sword. That's why in many cultures you have the border sacrifice. There's an idea in many cultures in the past of the border sacrifice that you would come to the border of the country and make a sacrifice because when Adam and Eve get put out of the garden, they probably wouldn't be surprising if they came as close as they could to make sacrifice because that's where the last time they'd had fellowship with God. That's where the tree of life was. There was something guarded there by the, by the flaming sword. Of those angels. So they probably came there and that's where the idea of the border sacrifice came. Now... That's going to figure in here in just a minute. Look at Genesis 2, verse 8. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant of the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of the garden of Eden to water the garden. I went out of Eden to water the garden. And from thence it was parted and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pison. That is it which compasseth the whole land of Havilah, where there's gold. And the gold of that land is good. There's Delium and the Onyx Stone. And the name of the second river is Gihon. The same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia, possibly the Nile. And the name of the third river is Hithical. That's the Tigris today. And that is it which goeth toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. Now listen. Notice. Eastward in Eden, two of the rivers... Euphrates, Tigris. Well, where are they at? Look what it says. Genesis 11. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east. Well, the garden had been eastward in Eden. They found a plain in the land of Shinar. That is near the Tigris and Euphrates River. Do you know what? It's almost like they were doing, which is what man's doing today. Trying to get back to Eden without God. That's exactly what man's trying to do today. He's trying to get back to Eden without God. He's trying. Listen, the land of Iraq, Shinar, Euphrates, Tigris, all around those kind of areas. Man's trying to get back to Eden without God. Brent, the hippie movement was big on that. It was big on that. Chuck your clothes. <laughs> yeah, listen. Listen. 
Men want the garden without God. Guess what you had in the garden? No clothes. All the fruit you could eat, except for one tree. And, and there they were to enjoy that. And Adam and Eve could have loved one another openly in a garden setting. Do you know what men want? They want to chuck their clothes, lay with anything in the wide open, whatever they want to, and have everything in there. But you can't now. Something was lost then, and you can't do that. It's different now. You could run around, you could run around before the fall without shoes on. Try it now. You're going to cut your feet to ribbons. Because of sin, there's things like broken glass and busted nails and rusty nails and tin to cut your foot on and all kind of things. You need some protection. And you need clothes on because they were an in instancy. But now man's eyes have been opened and you better cover it up except for the intimacy of marriage. Men want the garden, but without God. And you can't get that. Notice what they were doing again. Look what it says in verse 3. Genesis 11, 3. And they said one to another, go to, let us make brick and burn them throughly. They were building with burned brick. What are you saying, Brother Doss? Instead of lively stones connected to the chief cornerstone, men are building the day with man-made brick and burned brick. Bricks that have been burned by churches and religion and are ready to try something else. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We are entering a time where there have been people, they didn't get born again. They didn't get regenerated. They tried church and they got burned. And you know what? They're ready for something else. And my friend, the devil's going to provide it. Notice, the Tower of Babel. Babel was built. It was built by burned brick. A product of man, not of God. And that they'd been burned. They'd been burned. So we use some burned brick. Because there's a lot of burned brick out there. A lot of burned brick. Man, I got burnt. I got burnt. And I know in the temple, and I, there was burned a stone. That, that was okay. And I understand even saved people get burned. But there's a lot of people out there, they're burned brick. They're not regenerated. And they've been burned. And boy, they're ready. They're ready to be used in the hand of someone to help bring in a new world order. To bring in a new way. Set the stage for Antichrist. Notice. Notice. Verse 4, and they said, go to, let us build us a city. A city. A city. Who was the first city builder? Cain, a rebel, a murderer. Cain was the first city builder. <laughs> Brother, instead of, instead of pilgrim sojourners, they want permanency. Let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach into heaven and let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face. We're not, we don't want to be pilgrims and strangers. We want something permanent here to make them a city. Cain, that kind of thing. Notice they want to make a name for themselves. Let us make a name. Distinction. Pride. I'm from here. I'm from there. I'm of this noble race. I'm of this. Distinction pride. Black pride is hellish. Hispanic pride is hellish. And white pride is hellish. You want a glory? Glory in the cross of Jesus Christ. Glory in the Lord and what we have in Him. Just let us make us a name. Because we're a mighty people. Us. Up with the people. Distinction. A name. Pride. Notice, a tower whose top may reach to heaven, trying to reach heaven without God by their own efforts. Hello, Cain. I'll come to God, but I'll come my way. Let's reach heaven, our terms, our way. That's man. Brethren, you know what separates Bible Christianity from every other religion? Every other religion on the face of the earth. Brethren, Catholicism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Taoism, um, Islam, they're all the same. Shaman is, they're all the same. They go by different names, they're all the same. You know what they are? Man trying to, by his own efforts, get to God. And Bible salvation is the only thing that's different from all that. Because Bible salvation is God, holy, almighty God, loving man enough to come down to man 
and doing what man could not do for himself, live the sinful, sinless, perfect life his own holiness requires, and then dying in man's place to make salvation not something to try to be worked and achieved, but a gift to be received. Bible salvation is different from every other religious system on the face of the earth. They're all the same. They just go by different names. And it started, we came, and continued on in Babel. Let us make us a tower to reach to heaven. Our own efforts, our own way. Well, Lord looked down, seen that thing. And he said, uh, mm, taint good, taint good. Got to do something about that. And uh, we we're going to do something about it. Go to, let us go down. <laughs> and we'll bust that thing up. All we've got to do is put languages up, and that's it. One fellow put it this way. I thought it was pretty good. God split up and busted them languages, right? So what one says, pass me the hammer, said, comes out, hit me with that brick. <laughs> <laughs> Hold that ladder means pull it away. I mean, <laughs> that's just, all the Lord did was bust up the languages. That's where we get languages from. How about that? Spanish, Japanese, all that. Right there. God split it up. So that you had to leave the thing off because you couldn't communicate. And that's, believe it or not, where we also got the distinctiveness with the different races of people. Because look, who are you going to go with? Are you Listen, if you all of a sudden have Japanese language, you are not going to go with somebody that is speaking low country, uh, you know, English. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? If you're speaking Japanese, you're going to go with the people that are speaking Japanese. That's going to be the people you go with. What's going to happen as you intermarry with one another? You're going to breed out certain characteristics so that you will have a unique look. Isn't that the way dog breeding is? Any kind of breeding, seriously. You, 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 you keep the gene pool tight to get a certain look. You went with people who spoke the language you did. And in doing that, you're going to get a certain skin color, skin tone, eye shape, everything that distinguishes that people. That's how it came about. All right. That's, that, that's why you get the diversity that you have today. Now, but for our purposes this morning, God busted it up. Why? In mercy. Because the Lord said, they start this, nothing will be restrained from them. They'll totally... Listen, already they're not even thinking about God. Oh! The Lord feel threatened? You've got to be kidding me. Threatened? All he had to do anytime he wants to is say, you're done. Poof, and everything goes, the universe and everything. And one day he will. God's not threatened. He cares. And because he's holy and just and good and right, he cannot, he will not put up with rebellion. And if they keep going, it won't stop. So he busts it up. And it's going to happen again. And it's and we are, right now the day, the, the foundation is getting laid for the final, for the final deal there in, in the tribulation. For man, they find their chance, they find their other Nimrod, the beast, Satan. They find, they, they find their man and they, and here they are. Yeah, it's ugly this time. Real ugly. This time, God just split up the languages. As it goes on the next time, Jesus said there's never been a time, time like. What's got, the blood's going to flow to the horse Bibles for about 200 miles. He busted it up in mercy. Brethren, can I say this? And I'm about done. If God is busting up your works in life, it may be possibly that you might find him. If, is God possibly busting up your works and busting up your life so that you might find Him in salvation or find Him because you've strayed from Him in fellowship? God may be busting some things up to get you back where you need to be with Him or to come to know Him if you don't know Him. Are you a lively stone or a man-made brick? Are you a product of God or man's efforts? Are you a pilgrim stranger passing through? are a settled resident of this world.